Put on your hard hat and buckle up that tool belt. It's time for some heavy-duty conversation about all things construction. Welcome to Tommy's Toolbox, the podcast. I'm Tommy Whitehead, the CEO and founder of Tomco Solutions, a full-service building, renovation, and storm restoration contractor based here in Tampa, Florida. Sitting with me today at the drafting table is Eric Ritter, the SEO sommelier and founder and president of Digital Neighbor to discuss not only his extensive knowledge of search engine optimization, but also his great love for the community, especially here in Tampa Bay. Welcome, Eric. It's a pleasure to have you. Hey, thanks for having me, Tommy. Uh, it's great to be back in the studio here. Feels like a, a second home here and uh, super excited about the conversation today. Awesome. So the fun fact is, everybody, my first podcast was with this man right here, with Eric. He has a amazing podcast because I was on it. No, 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 because the content <laughs> that he puts out is incredible. It's called The Search Bar, and we definitely will put a link out there. But uh, it was so much fun. It had such great content. And then we started talking that SEO is important to everybody. So I, he, I said, hey, Eric, you got to come on my show. And he's like, of course. Absolutely, yeah. And, it, and we had a great conversation. Definitely go check out uh, Tommy on The Search Bar. And appreciate the shout out there. And um, let's let's get into it. Absolutely. So tell us about yourself. Where are you from? Yeah. So um, I first of all, I, I love leading with that and saying that you know Tampa is kind of where I ended up, and I'm really excited to be here. Um, I put down my roots here. You know, I started my company here, Digital Neighbor, which um, keeps me very busy um, and love being you know part of the community with Digital Neighbor and spreading the word on digital marketing, right? So digital marketing is my passion. Um, in my free time, you know, I enjoy hanging out here in Tampa. I love to run, I love to play golf. And also sometimes with the family, I play a game of Mario Party, right? <laughs> so um, those are the things I enjoy doing. Um, but also kind of as growing up in Germany, I have a big passion for soccer. So that's a priority in my household. If there's a soccer game on that, we sit down and watch that together. That's awesome. Uh, my son is a huge soccer fan. We were just out at the Rowdy Stadium, the, nice. uh, the Alang. They were they were very kind to uh, invite us out to see the uh, game with one of the Brazilian teams. They didn't very have a cool. they didn't have a chance against the American team. It <laughs> wasn't the Rowdies playing, but right. they have a chance. So soccer that that's awesome that we share that yeah. in common. So digital neighbor, how'd you get into the digital marketing? industry and, and digital neighbor right there just talks about your love of the community right in your your line of work. So that's kind of interesting. Can you tell us a little bit more about how'd you get there? Yeah, no, great question. So um, as you already mentioned there, it kind of combines the two, right? The, the neighborly, right? To me, that means you're compassionate. You care about the community. You care about people being successful, right? And the digital part is kind of that um, that cutting edge, that expertise part of it. For me personally, you know, I came out of college. Um, I'm of a, you know, I'm getting of the older generation now. So I came out. I worked at a traditional advertising agency, right? So we were still doing billboards, newspapers, where everything there, and digital just started out. And I always had a a love for technology, right? I always enjoyed, you know, tinkering with computers, you know. Um, started building websites from scratch. And so it just was a natural fit combining those two is kind of the, the passion for marketing and advertising with kind of my, um, my passion and enjoyment of technology. And that's how I got into digital marketing. Um, then in 2016, my entrepreneurial spirit took over and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna start my own company and um, we're gonna do this the right way, the neighborly way. And so that's where Digital Neighbor came from. And it just combined my passions of advertising, of technology, and helping out the community. That's that's incredible. So you've been Thank at you. this for quite a while now, not just before your company and now your company's been around for a while. Yeah, it's incredible sometimes looking back, right? Because to me, you know, um, when you're going through it, you don't really see the change as much, right? But then when you look back to kind of the, and I'm using air quotes here, kind of the early days of the internet of how much has changed. And um, it's it's really exciting to kind of see that transition, kind of where we've been and where we are now and where we're going. That's awesome. Yeah. And that's kind of funny. We were just having a conversation earlier before the show started about SEO optimization on LinkedIn and mm -hmm. how I took a course 10 plus years ago and it's nothing like what SEO optimization in LinkedIn is today. Right. It's very different. 
Yeah. And I mean, that's one of the things that makes me so passionate about this too, is that it's always changing. It's always evolving. Right. So, um, it, it, it's, it's never a boring day. I always say every day is different. Right. So, um, 10 years, it might as well be a century ago online. Right. Mm -hmm. Like that was like the stone ages almost where we are now. And so, um, what worked then doesn't necessarily work now. And for me, I always feel like it's getting better, right? It's improving, it's becoming more natural, right? So we're not stuffing things like, um, like we talked about earlier in LinkedIn, you would stuff um, contractor or whatever into your profile to try to show up at the top. But then LinkedIn realized like, that's a bad user experience. People don't wanna see profiles that just are repetitive over and over again. Let's make this more natural, you know, um, and find other ways to bubble the best, the most relevant content, the most relevant results to the top there. Awesome. So can you tell us a little bit about what Digital Neighbor does and and do you just work here in the Tampa Bay area or do you, you know, it's digital. Do you, do you yeah. extend beyond the Tampa Bay footprint? Yeah, no, um, great question. So Tampa is home. Um, and I would say, you know, it's digital marketing um, lovingly crafted here at home in Tampa, okay. right? So that's always going to be home. Um, most of our clientele just be, through my networking and kind of through my um, through having worked here so long is in the Tampa Bay area, but we have clients nationwide, right? Because you start getting referrals, right, from someone um, here in Tampa who might have moved to Georgia, right? And it's like, hey, can you work with us? And then, hey, I have a friend in LA, can you help him with his um, SEO or with his paid marketing there? So we do have clients nationwide. Um, we really um, boil and distill everything down to five different pillars that we like to help people with. And those are, first of all, the foundation, the websites, right? Making sure that your um, your website, kind of your digital home base is set up correctly, that it's optimized, that it's easy to find, that it's set up to generate more business for you. And one way to do that is the second pillar, which is content marketing, right? So that's the words on there, whether that's blogs or the service pages. But for us, content marketing isn't just what's on the website. It's everything that you're putting out on in the digital landscape, which is emails, social, video, um, and anything that goes along with that. And we also do digital PR. So digital PR, some people maybe call that link building, which is where you're um, reaching out to other websites um, in order to the, for them to link back to you, which is, I'm getting very kind of technical and nerdy here, right? From the SEO standpoint is um, historically, it's really important to be mentioned on other websites, right? So that's maybe, you know, a tip if you're a contractor listening here is making sure you're in all the local listings and all the directories there, right? So that way um, you come up as a um, as a relevant authority and not just a fly-by-night operation. So right? it's like a, a digital word of mouth. You know, you hear your neighbor talking about somebody locally or, or in person, but now there's a whole digital world out there and you have to have your name spoken digitally. Exactly. As many times as possible. Exactly. Yeah. It's not like the olden days where you could just have a storefront and people would walk by, mm -hmm. right? And like, oh, well, that looks like a great store from the outside. You have to have other people talking about you and sharing that with people online, right? So that's one of the things we do. Um, we also do local. So we really focus on maps and listings. And I'm sure we'll get into that a little bit later because that's really relevant for local businesses in Tampa. And then finally, we also help with paid. Right. So if you want to get advertisements out there, whether that's people searching online, if that's people on you, uh, spending time on social media, making sure that you're getting in front of them. And we combine all that together in order to help businesses grow and get more leads. Wow. That's a lot to digest. Yes, it is. Yes. And, and so people just say, oh, I have somebody doing my social media. That's that's just not the way it's done anymore. It's not just post a graphic or a joke. It seems like it's a very intricate connection of of optimizations and ads and backlinks and a whole bunch of other technical stuff. I'm going to admit that I don't understand. <laughs> uh, and so it's not just, it's not old school. It's the new school. It is definitely the new school, right? And the bottom line is that you need to understand where your target audience, right? The people that want to hire you, where they're spending your time and the best way to connect with them. And so just putting up a bunch of posts on social media is like screaming into the forest and, because, and there might not be anybody there, right? So, you know, we talked about LinkedIn 10 years ago, just a couple years ago on Facebook, you could get someone to like you on Facebook. And that was all the rage. I don't know if you remember that, the listeners remember, where people were like, just like me on Facebook. I don't want your email address. I don't want your phone number. I don't care about anything else. Just like me on Facebook, right? 
And um, then all of a sudden they changed the algorithm on Facebook. And just because you post something doesn't mean that the people that like you are going to see that anymore, right? There's like a statistic, 98% of Facebook posts don't get seen by your audience. You have to pay to play, you know, because Mark Zuckerberg needs to make money, right? Yeah. So you need to <laughs> pay Mark in order for even the people that are following you or liking you on Facebook to see your posts, right? And that's not the way it works anymore. It's not like, um, what is it, field of dreams, you build it and they will come. It's not like you're going to post it and they're going to see it anymore. You need to make relevant content that people are going to connect with. That's incredible. That's incredible. <laughs> this, the, this stuff still just blows my mind. Uh, you know, the way we construct a house is not too dissimilar from 10 years ago than it was today, yeah. you know, but the way you construct a website now is drastically different as, as it technology evolves. It sounds like, you know, it is rapidly evolving that your industry is so closely tied yeah. to what it is doing uh, that you have to just reinvent yourself all the time. Yeah. And, um, the, and I like to look at it through a little bit of a, a different lens where um where, like I said earlier, I think things are getting better and better, right? So um, it's not necessarily a reinvention there. It's more of a um, kind of an evolution and making sure that you are um, staying, uh, that you are um, giving people a great user experience, that you're giving people kind of content that's going to um, connect with them because as the, the search engine, let's use Google as an example, right, gets smarter and smarter, it's like, we want to serve up content that um, is actually relevant, not content that was created just for us at Google, okay. right? So while it, while it is changing, I feel like it is getting um, easier for good content to do or for good results, right, to do better. So if you're a contractor and you do great work, um, before you would have to play so many different games in order to have a chance to rank where now if you have if you're doing a great job and you're putting kind of that that word of mouth out and you're getting um, reviews there people are going to find you where it, that wasn't the, um, as easy or as, as much the case a couple years ago so it's actually possible that somebody on a startup or shoestring budget can do a little bit of guerrilla marketing, a little bit of work that is it's more legwork. You know, of course, we're always going to say pay for play is going to get you topper faster. Sure. But those companies that don't have $10,000 a month to go out and full-fledged massive ad campaigns, they still can get ahead with certain tips and tricks or, or start gaining a little bit of share. Absolutely. Um, especially if you really focus in, right? So talking about Tampa, right? So you could specialize in a certain area like, hey, I'm um, a roofer for Seminole Heights. And then really focusing in what do people in Seminole Heights want? What makes that area unique? What differentiates it from other areas, right? Then I can really stand out versus someone who focuses on all of Florida, all of Tampa Bay. Okay. And I can translate that in calls I get sometimes because I'll get calls that are like, I see you're in Tampa. Do you work in St. Pete? Do you work in right. Pinellas? Yep. Like, do you ever come over here? Well, yes, we have four or five, six job sites at any given time in St. Pete. Our regional area here in Tampa Bay is, is, is just a bridge. It's, right. it's like next door to us. Yeah. So it's not, not three hours away. Uh, so you're right, I guess, now that I'm thinking about that, that, that having that specific uh, tied to a region or, or mentions uh, could help. Definitely. Yeah. And I mean, you don't even realize how big Tampa Bay is mm. again, because we live here. Right. But um, I went to a networking event last night in West Chase. Right. And with traffic from where I live in East Tampa out in Brandon, it's an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. It's like might as well be a world away. Yeah. Right. And people don't realize um, that how different the, um, how far things are and really how different these neighborhoods are and kind of focusing in on those, um, is definitely, um, one way that you can stand out kind of as a startup. Wow. That's, that's interesting. So, you know, you started out telling us that you kind of went to school for advertising and marketing, mm -hmm. and then you went to work for an advertising agency and then you started your own agency. So this has obviously been a lifelong passion of yours. Was there a mentor along the way that kind of helped you craft your message, hone your skills? Yeah. So I wouldn't say there was really one person. There was a lot of different people kind of that helped push me in the direction, you know, whether that was um, at the University of Florida where I studied advertising. Some of the professors there, I think, really helped me get a passion for 
um, create uh, connecting with people's emotions, right? And not just putting out ads to create ads, but actually um, creating an ad that's connect, going to connect with someone, right? So I think that was kind of one of the, the first out there. Um, also, definitely my dad, right? So my dad has really instilled um, the, um, the sense um, in me of um, working hard, of being dedicated to your craft and being um, loyal, right? And I think that's um, something that I've had from a, a young age is, you know, that it's important to put in the hours, put in the time and put in the work. And then, you know, once I kind of started working advertising, as you mentioned, is just bosses along the way that would um, pull me aside and give me tips and tricks along the way. So it's definitely not one person. I think in every single step along the way, there's been someone there who's definitely helped me um, get to where I am now. Awesome. So you kind of touched on something there. You touched on uh, different steps, different mentors along the way. Yeah. Would you think that's because the evolution of technology, the evolution of advertising and marketing has so drastically changed that the type of mentor you needed was probably different at each step? You know, that's a, I've never thought of it that way, but I definitely think that's a, um, a great point, Tommy, is that, um, you know, things um, are so different than when I first started in the industry um, that, you know, um, now, you know, let's use COVID as an example, right? So COVID really changed everything where now you, um, where people were all of a sudden open to um, online meetings and Zoom, where before everything had to be in person, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I found some masterminds or some networking groups that we I've never met these people. It's all online, right? So things have definitely changed from a technology standpoint that have, have facilitated kind of um, who you interact with and who you can um, bounce ideas off or use as a sounding board, right? It doesn't just need to be people sitting across from you. It can be someone across the world or across the country um, that you're talking to through Zoom. That that's cool. I uh, I recently came across a group. It's a it's a unicorn group, and and it's a mastermind a networking program. And there are people from all over the country. And I just talked to an author a couple of weeks ago that was somewhere else, and I'm listening to his book in the car this morning. It finally came up on my reading list. Uh, so it is a different time. It isn't just you know who is your neighbor. Your neighbors your, your neighbor could be not next door anymore. Your right could be across the country. Yeah. So you touched on passion. And uh, getting the passion out of somebody, or seeing an advertisement, making them feel something about it. Mm -hmm. But what's your passion? What what drives you to to do what you do? Yeah. So um, two things. First of all, with uh, digital neighbor, really enjoy helping businesses grow. Right. So that's really what we're in business for is to help other businesses grow through marketing. Right. Because it is such a specialization and such a skill, whether you're a roofer, a painter, a plumber. Right. You just want to go out there and do your job. You don't want to have to worry about marketing or about how to get leads or potential clients. And that's um, one of my passions is helping you to help uh, help you just do your job. Right. That you can just go out there by bringing you customers and sales there. So that's what passionate about helping businesses grow. And then personally very interested in the search engine optimization, right? SEO, which is kind of this mystique. What is it? You know, it's very technical. And so that's why I kind of came up with a self-proclaimed SEO sommelier trying to make SEO digestible or fun um, to participate in for the masses. So that's what really drives me is I'm a educator teacher at heart and wanting to kind of share that knowledge with people on the one side and then on the other side, um, helping businesses grow. That's, that's incredible. So you're one of those professions that if your client does well using your services, they're more likely to use more of your services. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so you're not just selling a hard hat and you got your hard hat, right? Uh, it's not a one-time transaction. You have a very highly vested interest in the success of your clients because it ultimately means the repeat business, the success of your business. Would you say that's correct? Absolutely, 100%, yes. Well, that's, that's very cool. So I'd like to talk uh, some about some tools for success here. And, and more specifically, um, what is the most common misconception about marketing and advertising or, or SEO more specifically? Yeah. So that's like the million dollar question, right? So I really want to um, emphasize to people that there's not one size fits all, right? 
is just because it worked for someone else doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Also, um, secondly, is marketing is an ongoing effort. It's not just one and done, right? Why are there some companies that just everybody knows? It's because they have ongoing branding efforts, right? They're always in front of you. They're making sure that they're visible to you all the time. They don't just do one campaign and they're done. So they're constantly connecting with people and have ongoing marketing efforts. And also, um, making sure that you understand that your business is unique, right? Is again, just because, you know, Bob's builder, I don't know if I can say it, yeah, sure, why not? Bob's builder, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> um, does it like this? Um, I should be doing it like that as well, okay. right? So that doesn't, um, so to copying someone else is never a good idea. So I think that's a big misconception. Also for um, SEO, particular kind of getting into that, as I mentioned earlier, is that the the search engines, right? We got AI on the horizon. We got um, the new Google on the horizon. Um, is that it's constantly getting smarter and smarter. So just by following boilerplate, what everybody else is doing might end up harming you versus trying to stand out from the masses and do something that's unique. So I think that's a misconception is if I just check all the boxes for SEO that it's going to automatically work for me. Got it. All right. So it, it's not one size fit all. It's not. Definitely that's, that, not. that's a pretty cool uh, synopsis of something that gets so complex. Yeah. So tell me, how has networking helped you grow not only your business, but your your personal brand? Yeah. So um, networking um, is something that for me personally is doesn't come natural to me. Okay. Right. So it's something that um, I've had to um, ask the experts. Right. And so um, I remember you know, just a shout out to you, Tommy, when you were on my podcast, you know, you talk about networking and it really inspired me of how important that is. Right. So, um, that's something that um, helped me springboard into finding, um, a network that I can, that is important to me. And that became the Tampa Bay chamber. So I joined the Tampa Bay chamber, um, and really passionate about that. And I've met a lot of great people there. And, um, if I can just give some advice to the listeners there, is um, for someone, if you're also having difficulties networking or kind of don't know where to start, is don't bite off too much, right? Because that's what I was always afraid of, of like over committing, is find one, maybe two different groups and then just go all in and always show face there, make sure that you're front and center, that people um, remember you and that you're building um, authentic connections with people there, right? Um, And for me, it was also a pivot um, of kind of almost jumping over my own shadow because I had started networking in more professional um, networks like in advertising, the Advertising Federation or the Marketing Association. Well, that doesn't what, always bring business when exactly. you're networking with other people that are doing what you're doing. Exactly, it's a Tommy. It's type of, right. of, of, of event yeah. that you're It's very easy, right? Because it's yeah. people that are in your business, right? Yeah. And so you can have great conversations. But at the end of the day, like, what did I really gain from, mm-hmm. from this, right? So that's also a piece of advice is, you know, professionals may be great if you're you know, in my position, you're trying to hire people, you're trying to find people to hire, or you're trying to get a job somewhere. But if you're actually trying to grow a business is find a network where your potential customers are hanging out. So I, I love that because sometimes when I'm networking, I like to step off into an events and catering event, a, a networking event. Why does a contractor need to be in events and catering? Well, one is I help they, they, they touch everybody. Events and catering people touch right. everybody. That's so true. They yeah. have no contractors yeah. talking to them. Am I there to sell myself or get business right away? No. I'm there, like you said, to make genuine connections with the people yeah. around. But how many contractors are talking to them? No, none. So when somebody's house floods, when somebody wants a new kitchen, when somebody wants a custom build, they're like, oh, we remember him. More so, I also go in offering to buy their services. I throw networking right. events all the time. Yeah. And so I'm the only contractor going to event planners and caterers and DJs and photographers and saying, hey, we're throwing this event and I'd love to have that, have you service this event. And that is just like the epitome of what you said. Get outside of where you think your typical business would be. Right. Don't try to sell. Networking is not selling. No. It's about true. genuine relationships. Right. Exactly. And kind of um, becoming um, known for you as a contractor, right, is like I'm talking to these people and if they ever need that service, 
they're going to come to me. If anybody asks them for that service, they're going to recommend me, right? So that's really what networking is about, is becoming known as that go-to resource when people need it. So yeah, so I would I would advise people, think about people that use your services and where do they hang out? Yep. If you're trying to target the trades people, you might want to go to the Tampa Bay Builders Association networking meeting. Could be a great place. So look for where your client base might be. Get very specific with your ask for the week. And that's actually, I'm in BNI, and that's a very targeted um, mm-hmm. uh, direction they give you is, is, of course, anybody can be a client. You want everybody to be your client. Well, let's get real. If you say anybody that wants to buy a house, that's a lot of people, right? Right, right. Uh, but if you ask, oh, I'm looking for somebody that has their mom that's retired and needs to, to sell their house because they're moving in and uh, with the family yep. for, for elder care, that's a way more specific targeted ask. And so it's kind of interesting that you've touched on that in a different thought perspective, but it's the same message. It's the same message. Get outside of your comfort zone. Get out there to try to grow your network and just start talking to people, making, making connections. Absolutely, yeah. And you don't need to... Um, over commit, right? If you go somewhere and you don't like it, find another network, yeah. right? Don't keep trying. Um, you know, there's this saying fail fast, right? Yeah. And that applies to a lot of different places, especially in networking. If you go somewhere, give it a, give it a chance, right? Go two, three, four times. But if you don't like it, move on, find somewhere else to go. So what type of marketing tactics or techniques would you recommend for a business owner uh, to take if they're just kind of getting started out? That's, it's overwhelming. You've mentioned so many things uh, at this point. And this sounds like for businesses that are established. So what if you're just starting out and you're already yeah. trying to figure out how to balance your checkbook and to to get the tools on the job site and to call the customers? And, and how, what do you do? Where's where's the starting point? Yeah, no, that, that's, a, that's a great question, right? So like you said, you know, if you're, let's say you're a contractor, right? You want to get, you want to make sure you're licensed, you're insured, you're bonded, right? You want to get that out of the way because that's real company shit. Mm -hmm. You want to do real company shit on the marketing side as well. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? That uh, means that you are making sure that you have a unique domain, right? You don't want to have a Gmail or God forbid an AOL Yahoo email address, right? <laughs> you want to make sure that I've seen those earth, like <sighs> earth net dot link addresses out there still. <laughs> yeah. I mean, nothing scares me more, frankly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely your credit card number in this email. Right, okay. Exactly. No, sir. <laughs> exactly. And so, um, it's going to op- it's going to give you legitimacy, right? So, um, getting that domain, making sure that you have a website at that domain, right? Um, you can start out, you can build a GoDaddy website, right? You can do something very quick, very um, easy that that's um, f- almost free like mm-hmm. that, right? To kind of start building what I call that digital footprint so that you people um, realize your company, but then also you start building that authority online as well, right? So that includes, um, bulk, like I call it bulking up your brand, right? right. So um, you have a logo, put that logo everywhere, right? Put in your email signature, put it on the website, um, start claiming your online listings, right? The Google business profile um, is really important, right? We touched a couple times on how search engines are changing. Google Maps isn't going anywhere, right? So making sure that you have a verified listing on Google, that you're putting up unique photography, right? Don't just put up stock photos. Anybody has you know, their phone with them at all times. Just take some photos. Um, they don't need to be super professional. So that way when people... Um, find you online, they're like, oh, that's a real human, right? That's yeah. a real person because people want to do um, business with other humans, not with machines, right? Mm-hmm. And so kind of um, bring that human element um, is something that you can do yourself mm-hmm. um, by posting that um, those photos ev- um, everywhere um, online, getting yourself in those business directories, those business listings, making sure that you're listed everywhere as well are just some quick and easy um, starters. And um, also uh, kind of as a bonus tip is um, start thinking from day one about getting Google reviews. Google reviews are really the number one ranking factor on Google Maps, right? So if you bake that into your business process from day one, you're already way ahead of the competition that isn't thinking of that. Got it. And, and that's not too difficult. Somebody says, I love my ca- kitchen cabinets that you installed. Yeah. I love that faucet that you did. I love I love the paint job you did. 
it's just as simple as asking at the end of the job, do you love this? Would you mind taking a picture? Because the reviews with pictures are, are, are worth 100%, way more. 100%, yes. Yeah, would you, would you ask your clients, would you take a picture of this and rate me five stars on Google if you were happy with my service? Everybody wants to say yes. Everybody mm-hmm. is super happy to do that. Yeah. And aren't there, there is just like a link on Google. You can actually send it to somebody. You can send your link that goes directly to the customer's Absolutely. phone, text them, and they can do it right there on the spot. Absolutely. And it's um, once you've claimed that Google business profile, mm-hmm. you can go in there and to your point, you just grab that URL, save that URL, and just send it to everyone and just have it ready to go. Because like you said, people just click that link, takes them straight there. Um, if they're not, everybody's already logged into their Google account probably, so they can just leave that review right there. Um, it's super easy to do. Um, and, you know, you can even have a, you know, a little, a little script with it, ready to go, copy and paste. Like you said, you know, hey, if you, if you, if you'd like to enjoy our services, you know, we're a small business, nothing would help us more to spread the word than to get a, a five-star review from you. Now, it's definitely recommended to use a marketing service if you have that budget or you want to try to build up if you want to get greater impact faster. But a lot of the things you just mentioned are practically free, like the Google business account, the verification process. Mm -hmm. If you go through that, that's completely free to the user, isn't it? Absolutely. And to your point, starting out, you know, that first, I don't know, year, maybe two years, you know, you're just bootstrapping. There's so much that you can do out there. Um, Even, you know, I'm, I'm not um, too proud to say just go to YouTube, right? Mm-hmm. There's so many how-to videos on YouTube, you know, how to get more Google reviews, um, how to um, have a, um, a great lead generating website. I don't know. I'm getting very specific yeah. here. But you can search for all kinds of things on YouTube, you know, and um, just spend that time, the, the two hours that you would spend in the evening watching Netflix, right? Mm-hmm. Spend those two hours watching YouTube videos. On or the how search to bar. Or the search bar. There you go. <laughs> Get some tips. I appreciate that. Um, and listen to uh, my podcast yes. where we share these kind of tips, right, of things that you can do um, in order to build your um, online presence, you know. And then once that revenue starts kicking in and you're ready to scale, to grow, reach out to an expert. Reach out to um, a marketing company. That's great. Yeah, I mentor a lot of small businesses. They all know my pet peeve is at Gmail. Yep. Bob's painting service at gmail.com. <laughs> Jan's carpet cleaning at gmail.com. Yeah. You can get basic email and domain addresses sometimes for as cheap as a dollar a year. A right. year. A dollar a year. And it's not that complex. Oh, I have to do this. And this service says it's going to be $300. No, GoDaddy. There's other services like GoDaddy that are out there that'll give you that. And yeah. it is it does not take a technical genius to set one of those up. I used to be a techie kid. I used to build the computers. I used to build websites. Now this stuff is so much more complex. But even I know that on Wix or, or GoDaddy, you can click three things and it can put you up a very basic one page website. Yep. But the legitimacy of a handyman that has a website with a couple of pictures versus the one that has Jeff's handyman service at gmail.com with no digital footprint is a big yeah. difference. Who, who, these are people I'm going to invite in my house. Right. And it's, um, it's, it's almost to the point where it's scary that how low hanging this fruit is. Right. Mm-hmm. So as an example is, um, I live in a community, we have a Facebook group and, um, everybody got a letter from the HOA that, um, the roofs needed to be cleaned. Mm-hmm. Right. And so of course, you know, you start searching for, um, roof cleaning service. And um, all of the um, websites you go to are super outdated, stock photos, scary, right? And then people in the community are giving referrals and they're like, oh, these people just have phone numbers. They don't even have a website, right? So they're lucky enough that somehow they got this referral with a phone number, right? But that's not sustainable for business, for um, if you just have a, a phone number and you don't even have a website, right? So all the things we are mentioning are, are free, they're easy, and they're going to put you way ahead of the, the competition just by checking a couple boxes, like you said, and just doing the basics of having a website, having a domain, putting a couple pictures up, having a Google business profile. You're head and heels above all of your competitors. Wow. And so Building and maintaining that positive image is, is important. It's, it, it's the basis. When they start to grow and they need to make it look fancier, then they call services like yours. And then they have somebody expert take over because you can take them to a whole nother level because we can't be experts in every trade. Yes. We, we, have to have, we have to have help. But it sounds like even basic steps, like even if you just start out, keep refreshing those pictures as well. 
keep those reviews up to date. Let people know that there's different things happening. A little bit of edit or change in your website, just a paragraph here or there. That all makes a big difference, right? Absolutely. So you don't want to have stale content, right? Whether that's on the website, you know, that's why for years, marketers like us have been shouting or from the rooftops of put blogs on your website, right? And blogs aren't just there to create content, they're to create fresh content, like you said, so it's not stale. It's to create relevant content that um, Google or the visitors of the website say, oh, wow, Tommy really knows about this stuff. He's writing about this, you know, or he has content on the website. So kind of putting that up, uh, um, even if it's not the best content, can put you ahead of others. Um, and you mentioned the photos, right? Just coming back to your local listings, Google business profile, right? bake that into your business process, right? So um, I work with a lot of attorneys and the first thing I tell them is like, how are you getting reviews? How are you getting photos from people? You know, cause they have um, very, um, very strict processes like, okay, well, um, when we, you know, if you're a personal injury attorney, right? Mm -hmm. And you um, close the case and you need to give the client the check that they got, right? They come into the office, you hand them the check. They're never gonna be happier, right? Mm -hmm. You're giving them money ask them for a re review right there, right? Have right. it ready Stri to go. Strike while they're on top. Exactly, so just add that. They have a, they call it a, a, a checklist, right? A closing checklist. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure a lot of contractors have a checklist as well that they walk through. Just add that as another, um, another line item there is, you know, ask the client for a review, ask them for a photo, right? If you're a car dealership, someone just bought a car, take a photo with them in their new car, right? Post it on social media. Um, ask for their um, their review and here's the photo you can use, right? So um, I think that that's um, something that needs to be part of your DNA as a business is um, asking for those reviews. But with that, you're gonna refresh the content, right? You're gonna refresh, you're gonna have a, a fresh online presence all the time and you're gonna continue to grow that digital footprint and grow your business. That's awesome. I even know some of these credit card payment systems like Square and everything else, when they send the receipt, you can mm -hmm. edit the details on that, please leave me a review because I get them. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, so you brought up a good point. No matter what industry or business you're in, there's different ways to make this happen. You know, adding a QR code to a receipt is a fantastic way of mm -hmm. doing it. You know, um, there's some businesses they'll have, you know, business size card or postcard size um, card um, at the, the checkout counter where people can scan that QR code, you know, that goes to that link that you can get off your Google business profile and you can leave um, a review right there. Also had a client, he had a, um, a specialty shop um, and he would give every um, customer that left, you know, they would show them on the phone, like, hey, left you a five-star review, would give them a free item, right? Okay. And so, um, his shop had literally 3,000 more reviews than the nearest competitor because every single person wanted that free item, right? He was monetizing the engagement. Exactly. And it's it's just a little thing, right? Yeah. And um, depending on your comfort level, like car dealers, you know, they do competitions, right? Of like, hey, which salesman's going to get the most reviews, Oh, you know, okay. this month, you know, you get a, a $200 bonus, right? Yeah. I remember last, last time I bought a car, I got a text message from the sales guy. It's very transparent. It cracked me up. It's like, hey, Eric, um, hey, we're doing a competition here. Who can get the most <laughs> reviews? Would love your help to win. Can you click this link and leave me a five-star review, right? And I, and I love the honesty of yeah, that. Yeah, right? that's great. You know, so many different ways to do that. I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll leave you a review. So not only did he potentially get a bonus, the dealership got a great review from me as well, which is gonna help them long-term because it pays dividends for, ye from, for years from now, yeah. right? That you got that, that one review and you just snowball that and you're gonna be, you know, growing your business exponentially. Massive return on your investment. Yes. Small investment. That's yes. that's great. Yep. This segment I like to call stud finders. Obviously they found the cameras found us. But yeah, it wasn't that hard. It wasn't that hard, right? Good good camera crew to the to the production studio here. But uh, who was somebody that you see as being really top of their game right now and why? Yeah, so this is, uh, I'm going to take this in a little bit of a different direction here, right? So um, I really admire companies or brands that have been around for a long time and continuously stay top of mind. So an example is Apple, right? Mm -hmm. Apple this week is the 40th anniversary of the Macintosh, right? Which was like the first personal computer. Mm -hmm. And so I was reading an article about it. And when it first came out in today's dollar, the first Macintosh was $10,000. Wow. So think about that, right? Yeah. A computer for $10,000 bring boarded a company that is still 
so relevant today, right? For the last 25 years, innovation after innovation after innovation, they continuously reinvent themselves. And that's something I really admire. You know, we talked about how technology is always changing, is, um, is Apple is driving that and understanding, you know, um, how to um, create technology that connects with people, right? Because they're, um, they don't see themselves as a computer company, right? They understand their why. And that's, I think, is really something important. Um, talking about, you know, being at the top of your game is not just understanding what you're doing, but why you're doing it. Right. And so um, kind of that that root of it. Right. So um, Apple started off as a computer company. Right. Then they made MP3 players. They made tablets. They make phones. Now they're going to make VR headsets. And for us, that's 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 um, as consumers, we're like, oh, yeah, of course, I'm going to buy a VR set from Apple. Right. Because in their DNA, they're not a computer company. Right. And so that's something to um, think about. You know, if you're um, a brand like I talked about doing real company shit is understanding you know, what is my why? Why am I in business? Not just what am I doing? You know, the, the what is I paint the walls for people. I'm a painter. But why am I doing that? I'm doing that because people want to live um, in a, in a want to have a beautiful house to live in. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's my why. And then your, you can, why, your why is invoking the emotion. Exactly. And so that's exactly. So back to the emotional part of um, kind of marketing, which is is really near and dear to my heart. Another company that I um, think continues to reinvent itself is McDonald's. Right. So I'm always impressed by McDonald's, how they're able to kind of get the pulse of um, the culture that's happening and um, continuously innovate with the existing products, right? They've been selling the same hamburgers for what, 50 years? I don't know, might be exaggerating, but they're selling the same product for 50 years, yet they continuously increase those sales year after year, right? With competition, with so many better burgers out there, let's be real, right? I would choose a Five Guys over a Big Mac any day, yet McDonald's is able to um, continuously be at the top of their game there. That's incredible. Never really, really think about that. I uh, saw a picture the other day about the little play areas from the 80s when we were kids. Yeah. And now it looks like a Starbucks when you walk into a McDonald's. Yeah. So it definitely has reinvented itself. Yeah. So speaking of of, of reinventing yourself, there there are always new trends emerging. There's a lot of them in the digital world. We talked about uh, how IT has evolved, how marketing has evolved. So what rising trends out there right now that business owners should kind of be aware of and, and, and start to incorporate in their strategies. Yeah. So um, we've already touched on a lot of different things. Um, the biggest one being AI, right? right. And I'm sure um, you've probably had guests on your podcast that have talked about AI. Um, we've all heard about it, right? So um, it's it's scary, right? ChatGBT came out just a little bit over a year ago. Mm-hmm. In that span of 12 plus months, every single app piece of software I use has rolled out some kind of AI, right? Mm-hmm. Like um, Microsoft Word has AI in it, right? Um, my email program has AI in it, right? So start thinking about that. We talked about um, earlier how as um, a startup, um, you can kind of bootstrap your marketing. Why not start using an AI tool for that? Like looking at ChatGBT or Google's Bard, right? Both of them fantastic. And just ask them, hey, what could I be doing to sell my product? Oh, and just having a conversation in there because it's able to um, distill all that information down for you um, into a um, into a um, easy to digest context, right? That you can then use, and um, at the end of it, actually maybe create some of your own ads, right, or some of your own. Um, social media posts when you're starting out, right? So I'm not saying you should be doing this long term, but just to maybe put some some real company shit out there, right? Like I like to say is like, oh well, they actually have a Facebook that going, they have an Instagram going, just to kind of create content. So I think kind of embracing that and using that in order to create your own digital footprint out there, I think, can be um, a great use of that technology. That's great. I'm glad you talked about AI because. Right now, uh, I'm invested in a firm, uh, uh, clearset.ai, that actually is working on utilizing AI to analyze blueprints like this uh, and do construction takeoffs. It's very fascinating. That's on the complex side, but even on the simple side, uh, my Christmas graphic, mm-hmm. I, I put into ChatGPT, I'm a contractor, 
I want to create a Christmas theme slash construction theme graphic to tell people Merry Christmas. And it came up with a few ideas of stuff that looked like somebody hand drew them or, or, or that they were done by a graphic artist. Would I use that on a massive billboard campaign? No, you have to have professionals really get into it. But for a free alternative or just my subscription fee a month alternative to be able to come up with something really quick, really small that people look at, yeah. oh, look at the construction site at Christmas is pretty, was pretty cool. And a lot of people don't even realize with ChatGPT, you can ask it to help you shop for materials. There you go. You can help it, like you said, rewrite copy or give you suggestions on what you should be doing or yeah. what it would do. It's not a substitute for a human. No. But it is an aid to get you where you need to be yeah. until you have that chance to get that professional agency like yourself in the door. Absolutely. And um, we use it every day um, at our job. And the way we see ChatGBT or the AI, it's just like another coworker, mm -hmm. right? Is like, hey, I got these um, great headlines for this ad. What do you think of them, right? That's, you know, now I can just ask ChatGBT what you think of them, right? And it gives me, instead of giving me five back, I'm like, give me 500, no problem, boom, here's 500 options, right? So it really, um, it gives you the opportunity to scale your business and save time, right? And that's what it's really all about. That's incredible. So we've talked a lot about what you can do for free. And we've talked a lot about hiring professionals. When's a good time to start engaging with a professional? I mean, it, when is a good time to somebody to call Eric and say, hey, hey, Eric, I think I'm growing or I need to grow. I'm not sure if I can afford you. When's a good time to start the conversation, realizing that just because you start the conversation doesn't mean you have to write a check today? Right. Absolutely. So as far as um, hiring someone who you um, are paying kind of that step from, hey, I'm doing it myself to hiring someone else. Um, typically, um, we like to say when you have about 20% of your revenue that you can dedicate to marketing, okay. right? So once I know, hey, um, I'm making enough revenue here that I feel like I could dedicate, you know, a certain amount to marketing, which we like to say about 20%, that's when it's a good time to reach out to a professional. Okay. Awesome. So you're getting close to that. You may be not hitting that exactly. Start having that conversation. Absolutely. And a lot of professionals, you know, they engage and they have monthly service contracts or, or, or you keep them for a period of time. Do these professionals ever do one-off consultations? Maybe just a quick, hey, here's a couple things that I think you could do. Uh, we can charge you a fee just to have this consultation. Is that something you do or is it something that other professionals do? Yeah, um, we do that. Um, I do that on a personal level. Um, and a lot of other companies do that as well. Um, but just be honest, um, you know, um, most marketing companies want to get you in on a retainer, right? Absolutely. Um, but I'm um, here, uh, you know, my, my heart is in Tampa and I want to help out Tampa businesses. So I do a lot of consulting where someone comes in and I help build that kind of strategy and comms framework for them and say, this is, you know, what you can be doing. This is what it's going to cost and um, give them some recommendations of like, hey, this is a great production studio where you can shoot some video or here's um, a great writer that can help you add um, content to your website based on kind of doing a SWOT analysis, right? What are the, those opportunities for them? Um, in order to grow. And I think that's a great starting point, right? Even if you're not sure, you know, if, um, if you want to really invest a lot into marketing, at least it gives you kind of that first idea um, of what um, it, such an engagement or such um, an endeavor could look like. That's, that's great. And I bet, I venture to bet that at least one of those people or probably several have come back to you later after that consult and said, you know what, we are going to pay for this. We can see the value in it. And here, here's something funny is, you know, we've been in business for seven years. I had someone recently call me who I did this for six years ago. And they called me, he's <laughs> like, hey, I still have this printed out on my desk. Um, and I didn't ask for details, right? And it's, <laughs> cause I was very, I'm like, what does your desk look like, right? Um, out for six years and um, would love to talk to you more about mm -hmm. this. I'm like, okay, I'm glad you're finally ready. <laughs> you, you know, my prices aren't the same as six right, years exactly. ago, right? <laughs> we have a 30 day limitation yes, on that quote. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, so I, this little this little subsection, uh, we, we call this the construction site. Uh, but can you tell us the story of a particular challenge you might have faced with a client before and how did you overcome it? Yeah, so um, for for us um, as marketers, a lot of times um, there's things that happen 
um, behind the scenes that the clients aren't aware of. Right. So we're, um, you know, you, they'll pay us and we, it takes us 30 days to kind of go in, audit things and get everything set up. So there's almost like radio silence. Right. And um, so clients will kind of wave their hands like, hey, what's going on? I'm paying you. Right. So communications there um, was an issue. And so I identified that. And what we do now is we send out weekly updates to clients, mm -hmm. even if like nothing's happening, just so that they know, oh, good. Uh, my marketing agency is doing something, mm -hmm. right? Um, kind of keeping those lines of communication open um, are important. I think that's almost for any company, like even as a, as a contractor maybe, Very important. right? Very important. Is, is that communication and letting your client know what's actually happening and staying in front of them, I think is important. Yeah, it, it, that you are completely correct. Like your marketing, like like the first startup package, the first 30 days, it looks like nothing's happening. Yeah. In construction, it looks like that too. But the amount of back and forth with permitting, with the architects, with yeah. the government, and people are like, you're not doing anything. Well, no, here's 15 different things that we've done, and here's what's going on. That weekly communication of we're expecting the permit here, we're expecting the permit here. Then, then they feel like they're being touched, that we know what's going on. So that's that's great. Yeah. So for the for the last portion of my show, we call this ratcheted up. It's just kind of funny, <laughs> relaxed. We made it to the end kind of portion. So can you tell me what the craziest mistake you've ever heard of in the industry? So craziest mistake I've ever heard of. So some things that I sometimes see personally that really make me scratch my head is bathrooms. There's so many times I've walked into a bathroom and it's the small things, right? Like the sink placement, like the door won't open because the sink is stopping it from um, opening all the way. Or there is an outlet right next to the water faucet um, or um, when you go um, to use the toilet, the light switches um, on the other side of the room, right? And so now I, and I've never been in this bathroom before. I didn't know where the light switch is. So just those kind of small things from a user experience standpoint, I feel like sometimes, um, no offense to anyone, but I feel like whoever's planning or building certain like bathrooms doesn't think about what the user experience or what the person actually using the bathroom needs. Gotcha. Okay, cool. And you're extensive experience. Uh, have you heard of any funny marketing stories uh, or construction jokes? You know, we let you out here with, with something funny. You have any goofy story to tell? So I'll tell you my favorite marketing joke okay. and my favorite construction joke. How about that? Oh, you've got two. I got Let's two. Let's go for it. So we'll do the marketing one, okay. right? And it's a classic. Okay. Um, why did the marketer or the web marketer cross the road? Why? Because he wanted to get hit with traffic. <laughs> <laughs> I love the dad jokes. Yes. They're one of my favorites. That's, that's, that's my specialty. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and then on the construction site is um, what do construction workers do at a party? What's that? They raise, raise the, the roof. roof. <laughs> I've heard that one. <laughs> All right, Eric, thanks for a job well done. Thank you so much for joining us or Tommy's Toolbox, the podcast. If you have any questions about my company, Tomco Solutions, the construction or real estate industry, uh, please be in touch or visit TomcoSolutions.com. My contact information is in the episode description and I'll put Eric's there too. Make sure also to check out the search bar from the SEO sommelier himself. It's a great uh, show. Till next time, thank you again. I look forward to seeing you at the construction site for the next episode of Tommy's Toolbox, the podcast. Have a great day, everyone.